Welcome to another episode of Driving to the Res with Larry and Inelia <laughs> and Lucy and Lucy who might start barking any moment. <laughs> she's actually sleeping right now, so she's very happy. So today we were thinking about the split. I know a lot of people are thinking about coronaviruses and things like that, but we're mostly thinking about split. Yes, the split of high-frequency individuals co-creating high-frequency experiences on the planet and low-frequency individuals co-creating low-frequency experiences on the planet. Right. The most poignant aspect of the split is uh, fear. So the ones who are ruled by fear are choosing the low frequency paradigm and the ones who are not choosing fear are co-creating the high frequency paradigm. Right, the fuel for your inspiration is fear, then you're splitting in the low frequency reality. Inspiration and the why, it's right, the why that you do something. Why are you doing this? Because I'm afraid of the consequences if I don't, because I'm afraid if I do or basically yeah fear rules your reason fear rules your why fear in some form maybe not you're scared of something but maybe uh, what's other 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 things that can be fear that are uh, common things people use to decide something so, yeah, it could be, you might call it anxiousness or being cautious or... Um, jealous. Jealous, yeah, yeah. Envious. Envious, angry. Angry. All those things are at their root, a fear of some form. Mm -hmm. Fear of some form or another. That's basically the fuel for um, driving you around and keeping you in a low-frequency paradigm. Which yeah. isn't a victim thing. It's where you wanted to be and it's where you wanted to experience. Yep. yep. But as you navigate out of it into another type of experience, habits that are formed over 20 plus thousand years worth of lives are a little hard to break. <laughs> Do you have any in mind? Habits that are 20,000, well, warriors are one good example. Oh We've gosh. had a lot of good wars and a lot of good yes. swords and a lot of good guns and some really nice ships. <laughs> yes. That's a really nice planes, balloons, ideas, thoughts, intrigues. I mean, the the um, game is exhilarating when the costs are high, right? That creates yeah. the exhilaration. If there's no consequence, then what's the fun? <laughs> right, right. That's a program too, but yeah, it's it's very, very very well explained I should say uh, I as a warrior somebody who carries the warrior energies it's very easy it used to be very easy for me to get into battle or, or you know that type of thing because the you wanted to test your skills you know you wanted to see if you were good enough and all these things um, it wasn't a warrior through fear. I didn't get into battles through fear. I got into battles because it was a challenge and the enemy was a worthy enemy, as in he or she might take me out. They were, it wasn't clear who was going to win. So those were the exciting ones, the ones that I would join, the battles I would join. So your primary motivation and inspiration isn't fear, but what is it? In that particular um, paradigm of war that I used to be involved in, I guess it was um, testing strength. Uh, I suppose ego then, because, you know, I'm better than you type thing. So fear is inspiration and ego is inspiration or both low frequency? When you do things for ego, ego um, satisfaction, yeah, normally those are not necessarily high frequency things. 
What about being a very good acrobat and pulling off 65 flips? Yeah, I think that that's not fear-based as well. It's not fear-based. It's, like it's a, a little bit ego-based. Yeah. It's competitive, competitive, but it's not competitive against someone. So I guess maybe a power over another is another inspiration that's low frequency. Right, right. So this is a warrior thing where you're besting well, somebody would be power over another. Yeah, it could be, it could be. To tell you the truth, when I was involved in it, I didn't perceive it as being as a low frequency engagement at all. When I was involved in warfare, I, my thing was... Testing was, your metal? Yeah, testing yourself and besting the other person. Um, knowing that whoever won survived was proper, like, it was like inequality. It wasn't power over others as such, but seeing who was better at it. So, war in that sense, but at the same time, to war against another being, to destroy them or injure them, that's low frequency, it's a low frequency engagement, which is why in 2011, I received the guidance that I can't no longer engage in those type of dynamics, because I was feeding the low frequency um, paradigm by doing that. So, I... When cold turkey, I stopped right away. I didn't engage in that anymore. So, but yeah, there's there's a lot of things. One of the things that interested me that you mentioned earlier before we started recording was the dynamic of us moving out of the low frequency paradigm decisions or engagements while we are still part of a large group of individuals, say like in a tribe or a neighborhood or a company or a family or county a state or a county state or country a country even right that still very much engage engaged so it's very much engaged in the low frequency choices during the split this particular split the COVID-19 thing yeah who gets to claim the state or the county or the tribe or or what whatever if it, if it splits into two High frequency, low frequency paradigms. Is there a high frequency state and a low frequency state? High frequency county, low frequency county, a high frequency tribe, low frequency tribe. And, I mean, is the tribe, for example, um, a, as a unit picking a paradigm, or are individuals in the tribe picking their individual paradigm, and they form two tribes? I guess, in a sense. And we could say tribes, we could say counties, countries, whatever group that you consider yourself to be, you know, some part of, or engaged with, or identified as, I mean, engaged as a man or a woman, engaged as a human being, engaged as an earth person, whatever. Because I know the guy had decided to host the high frequency paradigm, and she's... I understand, agreed to do it over a period of generations, several generations, one of which is probably already used up and another couple are, you know, well on their way. So it's not like three generations is uh, 300 years or anything. It could be as short as uh, 60 years or even faster. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the meat of the question is, uh, what do you do with the larger collective that you you identify yourself with when a very large portion of them have chosen a low frequency uh, paradigm to continue on with I think that in past history what happens in that situation is if the large majority has chosen a certain experience and individuals within that collective has chose, have chosen a different experience, um, the minority leaves, right? Like the Lemurians? Yeah, the Lemurians left. And it feels very much like in this split, the low frequency individuals are leaving or are chosen to leave. So they're uh, the minority even though they might appear to be a majority? Well, I know, like, the example we were thinking of 
it's the it's like it's like when we go to squim yeah 80% of the people are running around in their masks, scared to death somebody's going to give them an eviction just by walking by them. Yeah. And when we go to Port Angeles... Nobody's wearing a mask. Mask wear. Yeah. It's really fascinating, isn't it? Yeah, they're very, very close together, these cities. They're right next to each other. But they're humongously different in totally the different. fear factor. Yeah. And so... Uh, you know, you naturally feel more comfortable. I do, at least in one or the other. I feel way more comfortable at BA, which is strange because I like to swim better right. because of <laughs> Costco and whatnot. Yeah. Now, Costco is uh, my favorite store, and now I haven't been to Costco for a month or two. Yeah. But, you know, Costco has got fear ruling their decisions right now and it's really Squim does as well. Yeah. yeah, it's really fascinating that store in particular. We were very fond of it. Um, did a weekly trip there to get all our supplies. And now we haven't been for several weeks because of their mask thing. Yeah, I'm not allergic to wearing a mask or anything no. like that. It's the fear of the process and the it's something com- incredibly distasteful and repulsive about it. Yeah, it's an energetic it's repulsion. It's like, I will not agree to play your game. Yeah. I just won't agree to. Right. If I have the choice, the choice is no, I won't. That's my right, and I guess that's just the way it is. And yeah. I don't have to go there. They don't have to make it so that I can go there. They can pick whatever they like. I don't have to agree with it, and I don't have to join in with it. I think exactly. that's part of it, even if I like it. Exactly, yeah. And now I guess we like Walmart, which kind of got tired of Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> but the last few times we've been to Walmart, oh my gosh. Walmart they've got, is very they've got colorful. some really good products lately. <laughs> they do, they like, have a really, really good product. Organic pistachio <laughs> butter and sunflower seed butter for peanut butter. I mean, like 12 different kinds of peanut butter stuff. And none of them had to do with peanuts. <laughs> I know. Honey walnut butter. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so... Anyway, what are you going to say about all that? It's a... I think it's something that we can all start looking at, observing, maybe. Uh, it is... I know that many, it's not just us, but many, many people are going through this right now where they are part of a larger collective, are we, and that... The majority of those individuals in that collective have chosen and decided to make decisions that are fear-based, destructive for the human person, and not not supported, you know, not supportive. It's really, like, uh, confusing. You know, the whole thing is extremely confusing, and I'm sure other people are confused as well. But it's definitely confusing to me. I don't have any problem not going to swim anymore personally speaking I don't have any problem swapping from Costco to Walmart I believe they're owned by the same people maybe I'm wrong but I don't think so no they're not okay (laughs) well I thought they were but okay so they're not which is good to know um but there's other issues you know where do we live now where are we going to move I have already seen a lot of people talking about this, Uh, people in our own tribe at walkwithmenow.com are talking about it and outside of that too, other people that I know, talking about moving, right, they're moving, they're moving somewhere else, taking the uh, stay at home thing, they can work from anywhere and they're moving, they're going to go somewhere else, they're else, they're just moving, you know, it's like... They're shifting the entire reality and creating a new one. And what are the things, you know, to look out for? What what are you looking for when you do that? Is the realization that, or maybe it's the collective where you're at at the time, getting harder and harder on your frequency. Right, yeah. If we lived in Squim, it would be... We'd be out of there by now, you know? We'd be like, God, get out of here. This town is... We would not. Not my frequency. Right, right. 
And I remember when I moved out of California in 2014, the guidance was from Gaia, and she said, I have other plans for California, and you're not part of them. And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> I have a house, a child? What? Yeah. Husband? I'm exactly. sorry, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. Right? Change your plans. Yeah. But the plans weren't changed, and I no longer live there. So. <laughs> you got burned out of town. Yeah. So... There's other situations that can reflect that, and I actually don't have a problem moving on, and I've like moved on quite a lot in my life. Um, but it, it also comes down to people in your family, frequencies and things, and how you can reach them, what you can do, joint decisions, family decisions, work decisions, counter decisions, City decisions. I didn't particularly like Port Angeles. So it's it's very like uh, grey looking to me. There's not yeah. many trees. And a bit scruffy. It's a bit scruffy and rough looking. But that's a place that hasn't gone nuts in, into fear. No, they, is, they did turn things off and they shut everything down, but then uh, they turned it, it was like again. there was a light switch that happened with the people. Yeah, the government itself. I don't know. I don't think there's many in Port Angeles that like their own government. I think they tried to erase their government and make their town a different kind of town because their government they was have. trying to poison them. <laughs> yes. And they're like, we don't want to be poisoned anymore. And the government said, too bad. We made a ten-year agreement. We're going to do it. With the like, right oh, right. Yeah, he's like, no, you ain't going to do it. We'll just delete, erase the government and start over then. Yeah. Didn't they sack him? I don't know what ever happened, but they did get rid of that fluoride yeah. in the water. And, uh, you know, it's like the people of the town have a completely different uh, frequency than maybe the government of the town. It's not like I think of myself as a Port Angelesino or something like that, no. right? <laughs> I mean, it's still an hour and a half away from where we live. <laughs> but our neighborhood, you know, where the Shaman Shack is, it's like nothing has happened. No, nothing has ever it's gotten a bit greener and the grass is growing a bit faster. Yeah, and there's, there's more animals. At least twice the as air many is fresher. hummingbirds as before. Yep. The air is fresher. And, and there's deer that are running through the yard that I haven't seen the deer since we moved there. Since we moved there. Of course, the hunters moved into our backyard, too. They did. The hunters moved in. <laughs> uh, there has been a lot more traffic with the logging trucks. The logging trucks. trucks went through the roof. I Ab mean... Like insane amount of logging trucks. One every 30 seconds. And yeah. at 3 o'clock in the morning, you'll get 20 of them going to work. It's really It's like really the strange. traffic and the tension on the air. Attention, not tension, but attention in that area is probably 10 times what it was. Yeah. And these places are for sale and these properties are for sale and come get a house here. And this is, and there's 10 tree cutting machines and uh -huh. all the trucks and all the logger pickup trucks and all days, all day and night. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a very, very lot of focus and attention there in a sleepy middle of nowhere place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's quite interesting. It is quite interesting. If you're interested in moving somewhere really nice, there's a lot of land for sale near the Shaman Shack. We're particularly interested in attracting lightworking men or families to establish themselves as part of the community, like this high frequency community. So, if you yeah. want to. If you got an itch, check in with Gaia, say, hey Gaia, yeah. what do you got in, uh, in mind? my area. So I um, relocate. <laughs> and if you don't know how to connect with Gaia, you know, you go to walk with me now. Yep, there'll be plenty of advice there. <laughs> plenty of advice there. We have a meditation. Maybe we can link that meditation in. The Gaia Reconnection. The Gaia Guided uh, Meditation that we yeah. did in Berkeley um, yeah. uh -huh. eight or ten years ago. If you had done it eight or ten years ago, you connect with Gaia. Gaia would tell you where to go right now. You'd already be there. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. It's really quite amazing to see this, this split uh, evolving more and more, like even stronger. 
I love the what you said by their masks we shall know them <laughs> by their mask you shall know them right yeah by their masks you shall know them the ones that are fear based well you Obviously also know the not. warrior ones too there are ones who wear their masks as a defiance well you'd also have to I mean stores other people stores that require you to wear masks so they won't let you in don't look for them there because everybody's going to be wearing a mask including you not me, I ain't going but in, in there. But in other areas, right, in other areas, like, really fascinating, like, in parks, or people driving by themselves in their cars, wearing masks. Yeah. Those are the ones that you know are fear-based. Yes, that's absolutely true. So, anyways, was there anything else that you wanted to cover? This well, um, one of the... One of the things that we talked about was what not to use, which was fear as your inspiration for action. So we really didn't say specifically what you might use for inspiration instead. Right. So, um, um, like the groups, I call it the animated the energy. Of Gaia. I don't call it like inspiration. Guild of Gaia. I call it the Why? animating energy that makes you take a decision um, and I would process the fear there's a fear processing exercise at ineliabenz.com if you are like feeling fear and then use things such as I want to build community to decide what decisions you make I want to find my tribe to decide what decisions you make um, I want a high frequency experience on the planet and then make use those t as type of inspirations as the animating energy behind your actions and your decisions and your intents I remember you saying something at one time or another about uh, happiness or bliss being uh, not actually the best choice for animating energy to um, use to focus yep. your direction but that if you were in uh, not so much in service, but doing something that um, serves a larger than simply you, yourself, I, myself, I, me, myself, more than an I, me, myself thing. Yeah, so I know what you're saying. It's basically what I teach is if you base life decisions on the I, me, and myself, you know, I want to be happy, or I really love that, or I am um, passionate about X, Y, C, so I'm going to do X, Y, C. This type of thing is not going to serve you for a long time. It's not going to give you a life service of happiness, because passion is very fleeting, and happiness is a fleeting energy too. So basing, using it as a foundation for your life is not going to be very good. Right, it's just, it's going to dissolve too fast to be, to make it permanent. Why? And you'll be psh, flapping in the wind in no time. Exactly. So when you're making decisions, if you base it on, I, what does my tribe need right now? What does my family need right now? What does my neighborhood need right now? What does my world need right now? And also... I like it and it's it is something I need too, right? Or I like it and it serves me too. So it's basically when you become a we, you're part of that larger collective and you make decisions based on that rather than just being happy or in, in you know in Nirvana all the time, you know, because yeah. it's not gonna that's not gonna get you anywhere. When people base their decisions of what the larger collective needs and then fit into that larger collective through their skills that they've acquired or um, their labor or their their capacity to 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 be part of a creative co-creative part of that society or group they experience true happiness permanent happiness like long-term happiness lifelong happiness I've seen it I've seen people who have chosen paths that were, they were told this will make you happy. Um, so just find something you, you, you're happy about, you, you like, and you're passionate about, and just follow that, and you'll be great. And there haven't been great. And the same people, same careers and everything, same results financially. People who did it because not just 
they did like it, but not just because they liked it or they were passionate about it, but it was because it served a larger group, right? Their like group. Their, like their forgotten promise, like the reason that they came and incarnated on the planet, like the sigil that we made, the... Uh, does that sigil have a name? The Dissolving the, the Veil of Forgetfulness, forgetfulness. Sigil. The Dissolving of the Veil of Forgetfulness Sigil is for those who came to the planet to create and experience a high-frequency paradigm. Yeah. And when you are doing that action, that is a base. That's a why that... That's a... Um, so long you can't don't forget it <laughs> that's a why that will persist yes that's a whole why that you incarnated for right <laughs> so you remember that one <laughs> you remember if you can remember that use the sigil and remember that's the why that you came here and if you're listening to this there's a very 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 high extremely high practically zero chance that that's not the reason you came here you came here for that reason I mean we're almost at the end of this podcast and if you've listened this far you're here for, you're here for that reason frequency level on the planet for sure <laughs> so if you base your actions on what does that what accomplishes that what brings that to be more and more then you're guaranteed that's a, a why you can really keep yep and that'll sustain you and it's not going to fluff away that's very true so when you get to a uh, junction you can't decide what should I do what should I do I don't understand you know process your fear if there's fear firewall whatever do a little bit of processing so that you can be clear for a moment and from that clear spot the why that I need to do something is to experience a high frequency paradigm on this planet now does this action or this thing bring that to fruition more or stop it? So should you move or should you stay? Is staying there bringing it more? Or would moving bring it more? There's an easy way to make a choice. Yep. <laughs> well said. Well, thank you everybody for listening. We love, uh, we love recording these podcasts and we love that you get to hear everything we are interested in. We're about to the res, <laughs> but this time it's Port Angeles res. <laughs> uh, go to walkwithmenow.com if you want to hang out with us. Uh, go to ineliabenz.com if you to um, subscribe to my newsletter and get all the updates and all the stuff that I don't talk about on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, um, and all those other things. <laughs> and also updated on when the new podcasts are coming out. And go to ibensacademy.com if you want formal training on the Ibens method. So, that's the call to action. There's plenty to do. <laughs> yes, plenty to do. Speaking of which... Speaking of which... The president got mad at Facebook and Twitter. Well, that's a great ending yes. <laughs> for our podcast. <laughs> Maybe we'll talk about that in our next one. Okay. See you later.